Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could you stand everyone as we look to the Lord in prayer? Indeed, it has been a week of challenge, but we are here this morning to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. That is our bounded duty this morning to worship, to praise him, to adore him, to magnify him, and to exalt him, to hail him, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, because indeed he has been good to us. Everything had changed and has failed, but God remained the same this morning. And it is our duty as children of God to give unto him all praise and all glory and honor. Let us all at this time look to the Lord in prayer as we whisper a prayer to the Lord this morning. Wherever you are, whatever situation you might be going through, we are at the right place at the right time in serving the right master. Shall we bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, holy and most merciful Savior, our eternal God, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we look to you this morning because you are awesome, because you are from everlasting to everlasting, because you are the God of yesterday, today, and forever. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the ending. You are the first and the last. There was none before you, and there will be none after you this morning. We worship and we praise you because, God Almighty, you are no distant away from us this morning. Father God, we reach out by prayer this morning and we talk to you God Almighty of our various situation this morning God. We look to you this morning Heavenly Father because you are still seated and high. We look to you Almighty God because you are still the Lord of Lords this morning. We honor your name this morning King Jesus. We hail you God Almighty. We worship you and we bow down before you. We understand this morning God that our bounded duty here is to worship and is to praise you in spite of all that we have be, are going through. Lord God, you remain the same faithful God. Lord God, you change it not this morning. And we hail you, God Almighty, because you are still God over every situation this morning. We thank you this morning, Father God, for allowing us this grand opportunity that we can come in your presence, in your presence where there is fullness of joy and where we can open our mouths and give praises and glory and honor to you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for taking us through another week. And as we face the beginning of another week, God, we pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit would continue to lead us and to direct us, that we would never get weary, Lord God Almighty, that we would stand against the enemy, that we would stand, oh God Almighty, in our times of testing and of temptation, God. We would stand, Heavenly Father, and declare that, God Almighty, you are with us. And because you are with us, we are more than conqueror this morning, God. We would stand, Heavenly Father, as vessels of honor that are being used by you, God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as we stand, we would stand with boldness in our spirit, knowing, God Almighty, that the adversary can only test us. But, Father God, as long as you are in our vessels, we'll be able to smile at the storm. This morning, Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing upon us today. We pray, Heavenly Father, that whatever would be said and done will be done to the glory and to the honor of your name. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll open our spirit, Father God Almighty, to the Holy Spirit this morning, so that the Holy Spirit can have his way into our worship service. We pray, God Almighty, for the speaker for today. We pray that the words, Father God, would be anointed even now. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll touch his lips. And Father God, he would speak, thus said the Lord. Father God, we thank you for bringing us thus far. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that the Holy Spirit now go forth and take us into another day of worshiping and praising you. We give over everything now into your hands as we ask these simple mercies and give your praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we go straight into our morning's devotion. I'll ask you to turn your Bibles to Malachi chapter 4, and we'll be reading from verse 1 to the end. Malachi chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to the end. I'll read while you follow. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubbled, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, 
that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And he shall go forth and grow up as, as cloves, cloves of the, of the stall. And he, shall, and he shall tread down the wicked. For they shall be ashes on the, the sole of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember he the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him unto, the, uh, unto him in, Her in Heber, for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with cruelty. We'll read the last verse together again. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite thee, and smite the earth with a curse. This is the word of God. We honor it by saying, Amen. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we worship the Lord? Hallelujah. I'll invite you to turn your songbook to the song 140. Sister Brownie. The hymn 140. Soon this life will all be over. On our pilgrim will end. Soon we'll take our heavenly journey. Be at home again with friends. Heaven gates are standing open. Waiting for our entrance there. Soon this day will we'll go over. All our beauty is there to share. Soon this life will be all over and all pilgrimage will end. Soon we'll take our heavenly journey, be at home again with friends. Heaven gets us standing oh. over. Just 
What a morning that will be. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Soon we'll meet again with loved ones. And we take them by the hands. Soon we press them to our bosom. It will be over in the promised land. Then forever we'll be home. What a blessed and glorious day that would be. Saints of God, we have just a little while to stay here. Just a little while to wait. Just a little more time to labor in this path that is always straight. Just a little more of sorrow in this sinful world. But soon we'll hear welcome. Welcome when we'll gather around the throne of Almighty God. What a glorious, glorious hallelujah when we stand before God. And sing holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah. Invite Sister Bell at this time to do the morning's welcome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just lift up your holy hands and say, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. First, I would love to welcome the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. Can you just stand on your feet and welcome the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more Sunday morning to give him glory, to give him honor, and to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Second, I would make welcome our deacons and also our council board. Please put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. We bless God for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, I would love to welcome, hallelujah, our bishop who is visiting with us this morning. Please stand on your feet and make our bishop welcome. Thank you, Reverend Powell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, I would love to welcome our musicians, our ushers. Our media personnel, put your hands together and make them feel welcome. Hallelujah. And last but not least, 
I would love to welcome those who are on the YouTube platform. Please put your hands together and make them feel welcome. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do enjoy the rest of the service. God bless you all. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We just give all glory and thanks and praise to the Most High God for keeping us alive that we can gather this morning in this fashion to worship and to praise him. I trust that your hearts today are ready for the word of God. And I trust that as the word of God go forth, it would be a blessing to you. As I leave uh, this time, Brother James would be coming with a special item after which we'll be hearing from our bishop. But before I go, I leave this psalm with you, Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all he nation. Praise him, all he people. For his, mer for his merciful kindness is great towards us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise he the Lord. I trust that we have a blessed day today as we continue to give God the highest praise which belongs to him. Sister, the usher will be taking the offering and tithes during the singing of Brother James. I'm so glad Oh, 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 oh. My Jesus Oh, oh, oh. 
sos no. no. Somebody go ahead and lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and worship the Lord. If you are glad that Jesus knows, can you just worship him? Somebody call that name this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Praise God. Thank you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. To God be the glory. It is indeed a joy and an honor to be in the house of the Lord on this another Lord's day. God indeed has been good to us. And we really thank God for his goodness. We thank him for his excellent greatness. It has been a joy being here. I greet all those who are online, those who are streaming on YouTube. It's good to have you worshiping with us at Lilliput this morning. Those who are on the outside in their vehicle or standing by, I greet you also in the all-powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Indeed, God has been good. It's good to be here another Sunday morning. Good to see the wonderful people of God. I haven't seen some faces for a while, and I love to see the blend this morning. It's a good mixture, young, not so young, aged and not so aged. It's a good blend of the people. It's a balanced congregation that is in church this morning and we worship God. Amen. Amen. I give God the honor and the glory and in spite of the sad occasion that affords me the privilege of being with you over the, these five months, I, I really appreciate and give God the glory. I love your worship. I love your, your fellowship. I love your, your commitment. And um, I was saying to Glenn Devon, you sort to remind me like when I just started official um, pastoral ministry, not ministry, but pastoral ministry. You remind me of my young days in ministry over 30 odd years ago. And um, it means much to me. And I really give God all the glory. Thank you very much. I want to encourage you to keep on worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Keep on being committed and dedicated. Keep on worshiping him as you worship him sacrificially. Because that is what the Lord really accepts and expects of us. As I said next week, Sunday, your new pastor, the Reverend Howard Nelson, will be here. I'll be dropping in for just a few minutes just to present him to you and then I sing those so sad farewell no tears demand I make my exit finally from Lilliput and go back in my full capacity as your district overseer and how long after that, I don't know, but I leave things in the hands of God. I started to share with us last week on the subject, uh, living the word in its fullest and experiencing its power. Psalm 119 verses 105 to 106, 105 to 106. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. We say amen. Father, be thou glorified. Be thou exalted. You are great and greatly to be praised. We thank you for this another day. We thank you for this yet another opportunity as we come to worship, to adore, to glorify, and to lift you up. Lord, let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted. Lord, I pray that even now your Holy Spirit will take over. We pray that, Lord, any interruption that should have come, Lord, will be nullified by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that any glitches, anything that would have, Lord, interfere with the proclamation of your word, we put it under the power of the Holy Spirit. Let your word go forth with power with clarity let there be understanding and let there be receptive hearts attentive ears for your word in jesus name we pray amen amen last week my brothers and sisters as i said we introduced the word the subject matter to us and we asked the question what is it to live in the word in its fullest we also looked at that the second thing about the word that we need to know is that it is our guide and we are guided by the word of almighty god this morning i want to begin by us looking at the third thing about the word and that the word is our fighting weapon the Apostle Paul, in admonishing the Ephesians brethren to put on the armor of God, thanks, he entreated them to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The sword, my friends, in yesteryear was a soldier's only weapon. So in the life of the believer, God's word is the only weapon that we need. It is the only weapon that we need in this warfare. The very moment you hear the word weapon, the first thing comes to mind is warfare. The second thing comes to mind is engagement. And the third thing that comes to mind is defense or protection. Am I talking to somebody here? So we need to understand that as Christians, we are engaged in a warfare. You and I did not choose to be in a warfare directly but indirectly and how do we choose to be in this warfare indirectly the moment we give our lives to jesus christ the moment we surrender to him and as paul said we become new persons we in, without knowing we enlist in warfare because we are now a part of the christian army and we are recognized as soldiers in the army of almighty god and every soldier must be properly equipped am i talking to somebody here and not only that we must be equipped but we must be adequately equipped with the right tool the relevant tool the relevant weapons that we need for combat you can see the soldiers out there and yes they might have weapons but if it's not weapons that is 
conducive to the type of war they are engaged in, then they are like sitting ducks. Am I talking to you, somebody? But the word of God, the weapons of the believer is the word of God. It is infinitely more powerful and lethal than any weapon that Satan has. There is no weapon that Satan has that can be compared to the weapon that the Christian soldier is equipped with. Somebody go ahead and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10, 35, the Apostle Paul states, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, or in other words, they are not fleshy. But through Almighty God, they are powerful. And this is what they are powerful for. They are powerful for the pulling down of stronghold. They are powerful for the casting down of imagination and the pulling down of every I think that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. They are powerful for bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. I want us to understand, my friends, that many are looking outside of the source of the word of God for that which will bring bring us into conformity to the obedience of Jesus Christ. But I want any believer who has a desire to be conformed to Jesus Christ, any believer, my friends, who has a desire to be obedient to Jesus Christ, your source, your guide is the word of Almighty God. Somebody go ahead and worship the Lord. I want us to understand that many of this modern day Christian would rather have us to think otherwise concerning being involved in spiritual battle. For many Christian, uh, for many, Christianity is viewed as an exit from warfare and an in, not an entrance into warfare but i'd love for us to understand that being a christian it is not suggesting that we are looking an easy route out paul said for listen to me there is a struggle there is a war that is taking place in the believer's life i want every child of god this morning to reconcile with the idea not only an idea but reconciled with the reality that as a child of god you are actively engaged in a battle am i with your church it is a solution to a problem if you are sick jesus will make you well discouraged you'll be made happy by jesus that's how some people think there are many who are of this false notion that once you come to accept jesus christ as your savior and your lord you have embarked upon a smooth path which will ultimately lead you to a smooth sailing and many were duped or fooled by this notion years ago that's why many when we were growing up some of you younger folks you would not know it many of us we had loved this song when we were growing up i'm sailing down the streams of tide i want you to understand christianity is not a sailing down the stream christianity is cutting against the current christianity is not flowing with the tide christianity is opposing the tide am i talking to somebody the life of a christian is a life of opposition oh somebody need to worship the god the apostle paul presented to us a, a real warfare suggesting to us that there is always a constant conflict the christian is always in confrontation 
conversation with the adversary there's always a conflict because the flesh is warring against the spirit the flesh want to bring our mind into captivity but the spirit is saying he is liberating us he is setting us free Paul said be transformed by the renewing of your mind talk to me church of the living God so Paul admonish us he said be strong be powerful be strengthened in the Lord and in the power of his might I mean somebody he went a little bit further he said put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme I want the church to understand that the devil has many schemes he's subtle he's cunning and he's deceptive he has many schemes my friends and his intention is to trick his intention is to deceive his intention is to beguile his intention is to wrap and tie you up but I come by this morning my friends to submit to us that we have a weapon we have a lethal weapon we have a deadly weapon oh God Almighty oh somebody worship God with me man. hallelujah oh from the combination of the apostle paul's command we are hereby being reminded that our feeble strength is no match for the power of the enemy thus we are not equal to the battle we must recognize the source of our strength we must recognize where we get the power the strength the resources oh our strength is from almighty god my strength cometh from almighty god because he's our help nevertheless my friends being endued with the strength of God, we are required to fight these spiritual forces which are arrayed against us. May I move to submit that the devil, our adversary, he is doing everything in his power to destroy what God has established. Oh, allow me the privilege to suggest that when Paul says that we are not fighting flesh and blood. He is not denying the fact that there are times when there are struggles on the human level. Yes, we do have physical and visible struggles, but the apostle Paul is saying that our struggle is over and above what we are able to see. Our fight, our warfare is more than the physical eyes can perceive. There is an invisible spiritual struggle that is taking place against us, my brothers and sisters. You and I cannot see the devil or his legions. Yet, as Peter says, your enemy the devil he prowls around like a roaring lion he's seeking for someone to devour oh our only assurance of success our victory over the devil is for us to be properly equipped and always ready to use the armor I come by to tell somebody this morning it is not how long you are in this warfare that assure you of victory it is not how many battles you have fought that assure you of victory it's not how many enemies you have conquered it is not how many times you have been victorious that gives you the assurance what gives you the assurance what gives you the confidence my brothers and sisters is that almighty God has equipped us is that God has provided for us the source the means whereby we can overcome so Paul said put on the full armor of almighty God my friends what separates Christianity 
from the philosophies of this world. Our world is secular and materialistic. By this we mean that only what can be seen, touch, or measure is real according to the world's perception. But Christianity believes in the unseen. We are fighting an evil, our wicked and powerful enemy. I don't want any of us to take our enemy for granted. I don't want any of us to think that he comes to play. The devil is not looking for any friend. If he's looking for friend, his only intention is to friend us, to destroy us. You know, get me your church of God. I mean somebody. I said his own intention. This is what Jesus said after him. He's a thief. He's a robber. And the thief comes to kill and to destroy. I mean somebody. No thief don't come to look friends and associate. He comes to rob. Oh the devil want to rob you of your morality. Rob you of your integrity. Rob you of your family. Rob you of your joy in the Lord. Rob you of your association and your fellowship he doesn't come to play i mean somebody's a powerful and devastating enemy he's a wicked enemy am i talking to you but i come by to tell somebody this morning that we are adequately prepared to fight with him by being in the armor of almighty god we are not fighting in our own might we are not fighting in our own power we are not fighting according to our understanding we are fighting in the might and in the power of almighty god it is simple saying we are fighting in victory we are not asking god for victory because we have been given the victory for jesus christ my friends has been victorious In this armor, all of it is, this, is defensive. The only exception to the defensive aspect of the armor is that last piece, which is offensive. And this is the sword. As was stated earlier, all other pieces of the armor is defensive. The sword alone is offensive. This is our means of resisting the devil when he lies. Hello, somebody. There's only one weapon to fight the devil with, and that is the truth of God embodied in the Bible, which is God's holy word. The word used for word in this phrase, the word of God, is not logos, which is the most common term used in such a phrase. The word rhema is used, which is quite different. Logos, my friends, is the word the apostle John used in the opening chapter of his gospel saying in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the word became flesh and dwell among us in john's prologue logos refers to nothing less than the lord jesus christ he is god's full and final word to mankind there is a difference my friends between rhema and logos logos almost embraces everything rhema on the other hand means a saying it deals with specific portions of the written word of god when satan tempted jesus in the wilderness to take stones and make bread jesus quoting from deuteronomy said man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of god this was rima as a weapon the word is quick and powerful it is sharper than any two-edged sword it even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart what are the characteristics of the word of almighty god look it is quick 
quick it is powerful it's sharper than any two-headed sword what are the purposes of the word oh the word the purposes of the word are one to divide asunder of soul spirit joints and marrow secondly it must discern uh, the thoughts and the intent of the heart ladies and gentlemen it was a great greek philosopher Heraclitus, who existed hundreds of years before Jesus Christ's manifestation in the flesh, who wrestled with the question of how can a universe in which there seems to be constant changes maintain order? According to Heraclitus, you can't step into the same river twice. What he was saying, my friends, or what he's saying is that there is a constant flow of the river. It is always moving. Therefore, when you step in the second time, it's no longer the same river. It has changed for Heraclitus. All of life is similar. There is no stability. All things are changing and are changing. But he got to a point where he questioned his own thinking, his own philosophy by inquiring if it is so. How is it that all things remain the same? Why the experience of one generation is the same as that of people who have gone before? He therefore moved to answer his own question question by coming to one conclusion that it is the word of God which he called the logos that stood behind everything that we see God's logos God's word was the ordering principle of the world logos my friends which is to be found in scripture some three hundred and sixteen times is the medium through which we know God and learn his ways can I tell somebody this morning if you want to know almighty God if you want to know the ways of almighty God I invite you to go to the word of almighty God if you want to understand God if you're searching for God if you are confused about God go to the word of Almighty God in the word of Almighty God you will find God oh hallelujah you will hear God speaking to you you will see God dealing with you you will know about the righteousness you will know about the holiness you will know about the immutability of almighty God you want to learn God you don't learn him my friends from other sources you learn God from his word somebody go ahead and worship God in the house Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Almighty God. Hey. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hey. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh. Hey. Glory. Hallelujah. Listen, listen to Jesus Christ himself, my friends. Listen to Jesus Christ. As he moves to confirm the power of Logos, to confirm the power of the word in St. Matthew 7:24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will like him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Can I talk to the church a few more minutes? Jesus said, if you hear his word and if you do what you hear, this is all he's going to like you. The wise man built his house on the rock. So when the wind came, when the waves came and beat 
upon it. They could not move it. It was solid. It built it on a solid foundation. So Jesus Christ he said, my friends, if you hear his word and do his word, when false teaching, when the storms of life raging, when the devil comes with all sorts and slot, Jesus will say, you're secure. You are steadfast. You are unmovable. When you live by the word of God, you are grounded firm and deep. You are solid. Nothing can move you. Hey, church of the living God. Live by the word. Somebody say, out of my step. Lead me, guide me. Oh, hallelujah. My friends, my friends, if you have not yet been convinced that you need to live by the word of God for you to experience its power, can you be patient with me for a few more minutes and allow me to move to submit to us the importance of living by the word of Almighty God, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. As I said, is that piece of armor and is described in Ephesians 6. We have been commanded to put it on. Am I with you somebody? Hey, we are fighting and we must have what to fight with. It is the word of God that the Christian soldier used for protection against false and erroneous doctrines. It is the word of God God that the Christian soldier uses uh, hey, against the doctrines of devils, uh, against heresies, uh, against lies. Uh, hey, uh, what is going to keep you? What keep the Christians going? The word of God, man. Hey, Jesus. It is used to defend ourselves from the blows and the attack of the enemy. Can I move to such a us that we must know the power we must know the effectiveness and we must know the ability and the purposes of the word we don't only grab the bible Sunday morning when we come into church or for a moment in the word or for you your your bible study praise the lord church i'm in church of god but you must Know the power of the word. Jesus did not speak in tongues. Too many of us, we exchanging the word for tongues. Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Use the word of God. Oh, come on. Stone to my bread. Man must not live by bread alone. He used the word of almighty God we must know the capability and the potency city of the word never forget its dual purposes the word is to defend and is to attack yeah, you, you didn't get me church of God the word is to defend and you must use it to attack you must use it to defend yourself against the enemy. And you must use it to war against the enemy. A wise and skillful soldier knows the difference between attacking time and defending time. We must know when it is time for the sword in hand charge. Those of you who are from my genre, you remember when we used to come to youth fellowship and, and YP sword in hand. Lord, my brother Thompson around a long time, you know. Yes, man. Sword in hand. And you hold up your Bible. There's a charge. And you start spinning your leaf. Am I talking to somebody? We must know the power that we have. I mean, somebody, we must know when it is time to build up a defense and we use the word of God and we say to the old devil, this is what the word of God says and we maintain our Christian position. We maintain our Christian stand. But we're not going to bow. We're not going to retreat. We're not going to surrender. We're going to tell the devil, we know that you are coming because we know that you're subtle. We know you're cunning and we know that you're deceptive. We know your purpose. We know that your purpose.
purpose is to get rid of every Christian. We know that you want us to change our style. We know that you want us to conform. But we want to tell you what the word of God says. We're going to attack you now. We're going to attack you and tell you that the word of God tells us we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The word of God. God tells us we must resist you and you will run from us. So no a resisting time. We have been defending the doctrine. We have been defending Christianity. We have been defending the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So no we're going to back that up. We're going to attack your devil and we're going to tell you that he has ascended to heaven and he's coming back again he's coming with his hand full of reward he's coming to pay every man according to his deeds come on church of the living God you must know when to attack Kenny Roger said no one to fall out no one to walk away and no one to run amen you know that sometimes Christian have to run. <laughs> oh, you never know. Yes, man. Sometimes you have to run. Whole time people say, the man who fight and run will live to fight another day. So, no, 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 go on too brave. You know, no, no, behave as if you're too brave. And you're strong. And you're mighty. Know when to walk away. I mean, somebody. There comes a time when you have to walk away from the argument. Because Paul said you, you don't get any benefit from squabbling and foolish talking. Amen. So you must know there comes a time when you have to walk away. Let me see you one other time. There comes a time when you have to cut argument. Amen, somebody. There comes a time when you see one taxi. You know, drive with that driver there now. But you better jump in it and run. Amen, somebody. Did you know that there was a time when Jesus ran? Yeah, man, there was a time when Jesus and his disciples take one himself, you know. I met somebody. So there comes a time, man. You, every soldier, every good leader knows there's a time when you have to take your army and you have to beat a yes retreat amen because there's a trap and you know equipped for the trap so you take away yourself and you go recoup and you come back again and you study you study the subtlety you get in the word of God and when you get in the word of God then you understand and then you are better equipped and prepared to deal with the confrontation of the whole enemy. Somebody go ahead and praise Almighty God. Therefore, Christians must have the word. You must know the word for it has the ability and the power to trample any and all objections that Satan posed at Christians. You must know the word. Let it be your daily food. Am I with you, somebody? In this vicious warfare, our only weapon is the word of God. In this vicious and intensified warfare, our only defense is the word of God. Christians, if you had put down your sword, it is time to pick it up. It is time to arm yourself with the word of Almighty God. These are the days when sound doctrine will not be endured. People have itchy ears, giving heed to seducing doctrines and doctrines of the devil. Church of God, can I pause long enough for coming on home now? Ah, Jesus. Church, you don't even have to go outside of the church to find the doctrines of the devil. The Bible said they crept in and aware. You read it? Yeah, man, it's the Bible tells us they crept in unaware. They are deceptive. And they look for the weaker link. A chain is as strong. Hello. So they come in 
subtle remember that serpent you know a serpent a subtle the devil is a serpent and he's subtle he's cunning and he's deceptive so you, you, you don't have to wait till you get to work to find them my friends the word of God is alive the word of God is powerful it is simple saying it is active it cuts it pierces it reaches the innermost part of the heart. The word of God, my friends, is a reflected mirror of our lives. James 1, 22 through 25. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was but also looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed the word of God is not only like a mirror. We see ourselves in the word of Almighty God. You want to know where you are in your Christian life? You don't find pastor. You don't have to find Dio. You don't have to find youth leader. You don't have to find men's leader. You don't have to find a women's ministry leader. Am I talking to you? You don't have to find your best friend to know where you are in the word of Almighty God or in your Christian life. Get in the word of God. Read the word of God. And when you read the word of God, then you put your life against it. And you see how it may up. Or you weigh it and see if you are found Want and see your balance in the balance. See where you are. Nobody don't have to tell you whether you're righteous. Nobody don't have to tell you whether you are godly. Nobody don't have to fight with you. Once you're a student of the word, and you're not trying to deceive yourself. I'm closing my Bible because I'm finishing it. Sir, I'm not done it. But I'm finishing it. Am I with your church of God? Because, you see, my friends, too many of us, we have deviated. And remember last week we said, you know, the problem the world is facing is that the world has deviated from the word of Almighty God. I heard the Prime Minister a few weeks ago who opened the scripture and he read from the word of God. I said the problem Jamaica is having with crime is a hard problem. He find it, you know. He found it. And he understand where the problem is. He understand that the heart is wicked. Lord help me, Jesus. You, you want to know what, what's the condition of your heart? May I invite you to get into the word of God? You want to know if you are pleasing to the Lord? Hello? Because it, it, it's, it's all good and well, my friends. It is all good and well when we are patted on the backs and on the shoulders by our friends, our associates, and our generation. But Jesus is saying, I made up your works and none of them not perfect. I, I, I know a few of you joined, joined me in a moment in the word. You know, and we are looking at the, 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 the Sardis church. I hope I'll be able to wrap up that one this week. But Jesus said of the church, you know, it was a lively church, you know. Jesus said, man, you have a name about you. You're living, but you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, help me, Jesus. You're lively. The community will big you up. And everybody talking about you. Your programs are run. What, what the world will say. Your program is shot. Hello. Your program saying one and everything 
crazy and everything going on. But Jesus walked in and Jesus looked at him and Jesus said to Sardis, Sardis, you're alive but you're dead. You know, and they, they, they cool on and he said, all right. He went a little bit further down in the passage and he said, all of your works and none of them are perfect. None of your work don't meet the standard that God wants it to meet. How are we going to find out, my friends, if we have measured up to God's standard? The word. Tell your neighbor the word. Tell someone, let's get back to the word. If you're on YouTube, just say, type in, let's get back to the word. Now, to me about, are you in the word? Are you feasting on the word? Is the word your guide? Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. As I close today, what is it we are going to live by? The word of God. Not our tradition. Not our custom. Not what we used to. Hello? It is not how sociable and how friendly we are. It is this. 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 The word of Almighty God. That which is sharper. That which pierces. That which divides. That which cuts. That which guides. That which empowers. That which we use to defend. That which we use to attack. Let's get back to the word, my friends. The word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Can the church stand? If you if you have been missing out on the word. If the word, or if you have lost interest in the word, if you are seeking guidance from other sources and not the word, I invite you to come back to the word today. If you are struggling with the word for it to be your guide, I invite you to stop resisting and let the word take hold of you. Bow your heads with me wherever you are. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. Lord, we bow before you. We glorify. We honor you. Thank you for your. Thank you. For your word. Thank you for that which makes the difference. In our lives. We pray today, Lord. That you will lead us, guide us with your word. Take us back through the power of your Holy Spirit to your word. Let your word be impactful on our lives. Let your word be that which guides us. That which teaches us. I pray this moment, God, that your word will become powerful and effective in our lives. Help us, Lord, that through your word we'll be able to clean up our lives. The question was asked, how can a young man cleanse his ways? And the writer responded by taking heed.
to the word of God. Lord, many times we fail. Many times we mess up. Many times we have sinned and we have come short of your glory. But today, I pray God, help us to come back to your word. Lord, Israel had forsaken your word. They turn away from your word. Lord, when we leave your word, worship become a stalemate. When you leave your word, God, we turn to everything else to stimulate and to keep us going. But help us, God, to get back to your word that worship can become meaningful. Worship will be genuine. Worship will be real. Worship will be acceptable. Worship will be to your standard. Worship will be approved by you, God. Lord, help us that we get to your word. And in your word, we will find the directives for our lives. In your word, we will find your will for our lives. In your word, we'll find the path for our lives. In your word, God will discover our calling. In your word, God will find the gift you have for us. Help us, God, not to look to no other source for the purpose for our lives. But take us back to your word. Help us to become students of your word. So that Lord, like the writer, we can say thy word. As I hid in my heart, will not sin against you. I pray for the congregation at Lilliput. I pray for the incoming minister. Reverend Howard Nelson and his wife. I pray God that when they shall take up appointment here, just about Saturday, God Almighty, I pray God that they'll come anointed. I pray they will come inspired. I pray they will come with the word. I pray God that they will not come with just mere human's ability and potential. But they'll come, God, hearing from you. That when they hear from you, God, they can speak to these people. Thus say it, Almighty God. I pray for the lay leadership. I pray for the lay leadership. The officers, finance committee, departmental leaders, committee leaders. Lord, I pray that every leader will understand that you appoint pastors. And pastors serve as poemen, shepherd over the flock. I pray for a spirit of humility, a spirit of acceptance, a spirit of obedience. I pray, God, for our togetherness. I pray for cooperation. I pray for oneness. I pray for revival in Lilliput. Lord, I pray for this church. God, I pray for Lilliput. I commit them. I commit this little group of people. My heart warm to this group of people. I pray for genuineness. I pray that there will be no need for impression. Because God, we cannot impress you. But I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit that abides with your people will continue to be abide. And he will be the leader. He will be the comforter. We pray for growth in all areas. Numerical growth, spiritual growth, financial growth. God, I pray the members will grow. 
The members will be blessed. I pray that they will be healing. God, as you bless them financially, they will bless the church. I pray you will bless them and their jobs. Those who are studying, God, you will empower, you will equip them as they work and study. Touch their intellect. God, that they will not just pass, but they will come out, God, with honors. Lord, I pray you open up their understanding. Give them wisdom. Give them knowledge. Inspire them, God, with your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Father, for whatever the desire, the needs of your people, God, you will supply the needs of your people. Strengthen the young people. Strengthen the young adult. Strengthen the seniors. Let them be example. Let them live exemplary lives, God. Oh, God Almighty. Be with Lily put in a very special and profound way. Like Paul said to the Thessalonians, he was using them as an example. They are not the smallest church in the district, but God, they can be used as an example to the district in all areas. So as you bless them, God, let it not get to them and they leave any aspect. Let them not walk away from first love. Like those in Sardis who had not soiled their garments. God, let they be firm, steadfast, and unmovable. Always abounding in your work. Knowing that their labor will not be in vain in you. We pray for the tithes. We pray for the offering which was taken. We pray for the givers. We pray for those who would have loved to give and did not have it to give. That you will be in the provider. You'll provide. We pray for those who have to give and did not give. Refuse from giving. I pray that your Holy Spirit will bring conviction upon them. That even no God, your Holy Spirit will be speaking to their hearts. And whatever needs, whatever they should have contributed to. And they withhold, your spirit will bring conviction. They will call for members of the finance committee. And they'll make effort to give to you. And as they give to you, God, as they give us, those who would have loved to give, have the desire to give. Those who have to give and didn't give but will be given even today, God. I pray you will open their borders and extend their borders and bless them. Sanctify and consecrate the tithes and offering as we give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. And Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord bless. He keeps you. He makes his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. He lifts up the light of his countenance round about you. And he gives you his peace. No one forever. God bless you. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thanks for being out today. We invite you to the rest of the services online. Just before I go, let me remind all departmental leaders that... Your pastor, when he comes in, he has all autonomy, all rights. If it is his will to change any leader, don't tell him you were just elected, selected, or whatever. He is the pastor. Please to work with your pastor um, for the women's ministry, the, the, your president. Um, if Sister Nelson so desire to take up the presidency by virtue of her being the pastor's wife, it is her call. So if she comes in and decides that she's going to be the woman's ministry president, please work with her. I'm in church. And whatever portfolio you have, if the pastor so desire, to have changes. Every prime minister loves his own cabinet. 
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. So don't call me, tell me, say, Pastor Nelson won't change everything. Just work with him. God bless you. Love you, Lilliput. Love you. Take care. Be good. Remain humble. Remain faithful. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.